my Father in heaven for this day. I don't take it for granted that, you know, I stand before you. And I want to thank uh, the good shepherd of the house, our pastor, who's not around with us today. But we pray for him that wherever he may be, that the almighty God hand will be over him, it will protect him, and it will guide him in each and every way in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that the almighty God, as he took taken him, he would bring him back safely, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. So this morning, brethren, um, I have a word that I'm going to speak. Um, it's, I'm, I won't be up here very long, I, I can tell you that. I, I won't be up here very long, and uh, it's just the word that the Lord has uh, laid in my heart. So I, I bring that word forth to you this morning. Amen? Amen. And the title of my word that I have for you this morning is Trusting in the Lord, our God. <laughs> Trusting in the Lord, our God. Amen? And you can use text, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. And it said, and Jabaz called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that my hand might be with thee, and keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he was requested. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if we don't know, when I was looking at this word and preparing it, you know, Jabaz uh, comes um, his mother when he had him you know the Hebrew word for uh, Jabaz is pain you know and sorrow so when his mother was giving birth to him she had sorrow and she had pain so that's why she had named him Jabaz but I can tell you this brethren that by the end of this word you can see that he didn't allow that to stop his progress amen so there's five things we could take away from this teaching this morning. What we could learn from the life of Jabaz. Amen. And the first one is when, that's the first thing that he did, was asking of God. Amen. That's the very first thing in the scripture that tells us about Jabaz. He states his lordship over the God that he's praying to. You know, brothers and sisters, we must know who we are praying to. Amen. We must know that the God that we serve in is praying to, he is the owner of heaven and earth. So he was very conscious of the fact that who he was asking God for, who he was praying to, for God to answer him. Amen. So he cried unto the God of Israel. You know, Jabaz cried unto the God of Israel because he was asking God to do something for him. He was trusting in God that God was going to want to do something good for him in his life, you know. So he called upon the God who hears our prayers. Hallelujah. He called about uh, on the living God who hears the prayers of his true children. Amen. The one and only true God. This is what he put his trust in. The one and and the only true God that he was calling upon to hear his, to hear his prayers. Hallelujah. So Jabraz was using prayer to get something from God, you know, and he wasn't using it to get, get something just for himself. He was using it because he wanted to be an impact on the kingdom of God. So he was calling upon God of heaven and earth to help him, to help him accomplish the promises of God, the promises of God that are, are um, for you and I. Amen? Amen? And like I said before, he didn't just want the blessing for himself. He wanted these blessings for others. Amen? He didn't do these things for selfish reasons. Because sometimes when we pray, you know, we should pray for ourselves, but sometimes our prayer is done for selfish reasons, you know? And if you look at the story of Jabez, because in the Bible, it's really only about two or three verses in the Bible, you know? You can go back and you can look at it yourself. It's only about two or three verses, but it's very power, power, powerful, amen? 
And like I said, he wanted the blessings not just for himself, but he wanted to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. And the number two thing is, is that, that you would bless me. Hallelujah. You know, he was calling on the God of heaven and earth that this God that he was praying to, the Lordship that he was praying to, that he would bless him. And like I said before, brother, when he, uh, he recognized God as being the only true God in his life. Amen. And he understood that as he's praying and, that, and believing that God's going to do this for him, he acknowledged that the blessings could only come from God alone. Amen. He knew that the, the blessings only could come from God. And there's only one true God. Hallelujah. And if you look at um, John 14, 14, it, said, it tells you, if you should ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. So he was confident in the God that he was crying out to, even though his life started out in a way that you would think it was bad because his name, like in the Hebrew language, like I said before, means pain. It means sorrow. But to the glory of God, that's not the way his story ended. Amen? So when God, when he, when he, uh, when Jabaz asked God, he answered him. He answered him in a mighty and powerful way. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, this morning, you know, as I give this word, we need to have that same confidence that Jabaz had, you know? We need to have the same faith and the same belief and the same trust that he had in his God that he can, knew that if he can call upon him, that he, if he asked anything in his name, that he would do it. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, as we call upon our God, that he would do it for us in Jesus' name. So whatever we ask in his name, brothers and sisters, we must have the confidence to know that our God will do it and he will answer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when you pray, you must do it with your heart fully invested in our Jesus Christ. Because I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, God knows your heart. Maybe man might know, not know your heart and not know, knowing what's inside your heart, but the living God that we are serving here today, he knows your heart. So you must do it with your heart fully invested in the living God to know that he will answer the prayers that you have asked. Amen? Amen. And let's not be fooled, brothers and sisters. You know, it's easy to fool man. It's very easy to fool man. But you cannot fool the living God. Hallelujah. He knows the reason why you are asking for these prayers. He knows the reason. So we must be careful, you know, what we're asking for. Because he knows even before we know. Amen. And the Bible tells us that, you know, we must not pray amiss, you know. And sometimes we might be um, praying for God to answer our prayers for the wrong reason. And God knows the reason why, you know, you're coming before him and you're asking him to uh, answer this prayer. Amen? Because in James 4.3 it tells us, ye ask and receive not because you ask and miss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Amen? You know, and that's basically telling us that you, you're doing it for yourself. You know, you're not doing it for God's glory. You know? And when you're not doing it for God's glory, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Amen? So we, all, we always must, you know, know and have that attitude, you know, why we pray and why we asking God to do these things in our life, you know? Because, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, that you know, what if a man profits the whole world? And in the end, he loses his soul. What is your and our soul's worth? 
Is it worth all the material things that we have in the world? You know, are we willing to lose our soul because we're, we're worried about, you know, these, the material things of the world? You know, I mean, you, you really can't be uh, a blessing. You really can't be truly blessed unless you're a blessing to somebody. Amen? You have to be a blessing to somebody. I mean, what's the sense of going through life and especially your spiritual walk with Christ and you're not even a blessing to somebody? Hallelujah. You know, and I'm, I'm not talking about being a blessing just to your children, you know, because that's easy. You know, we love our children. You know what I mean? Amen. We love our children. You know, if we have children, we love them. So it's easy to be a blessing for our children, I believe. But it's others that are not basically related to you, you know. Can you be a blessing to a stranger? Hallelujah. You know, and God looks at that and he sees that, you know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And the number three thing is, it, he tells you in that verse, is that he asks for, that thou would enlarge my coast. Hallelujah. You know, he wanted, he, and he prayed for God to enlarge his coast, you know. And he wasn't just talking about, he wasn't just talking about land, you know. He wanted more property. He wanted more land. What he wanted from the God of heaven and earth he wanted his spiritual territory to be increased. Hallelujah. He wanted his spiritual territory to be increased. And the only way you can have your spiritual territory increased is by if you are diligently seeking the word of God. You know, are you praying? Are you reading your Bible? Are you trying to draw yourself closer to the God that you say you love? Amen. Amen. So if you look at um, Psalm 115, Psalm 115, verse 14, that verse tells us, the Lord should increase you more and more, you and your children. And verse 15 says, ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Amen? So it's telling you in, in that verse that the increase in your life comes from our Lord Jesus Christ. And not only would, you know, he increase you, you know, with uh, prosperity, you know, with new homes and new cars and new diamonds and new furs, you know, he would increase you your spiritual life, you know, so you can have an um, impact on the kingdom of Christ. Amen? So this is why Jab Jabaz wanted his coast enlarged, you know, because he, like I said before, he, he wanted to be a blessing unto the kingdom of God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that as, you know, we have our Christian walk, that God will give us uh, spiritual blessings and that we each will have a positive impact on kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So, like I said, God's the only one can give the in, um, spiritual increase. It cannot, it doesn't come from man. It comes from our Father who rests in heaven, you know? It only could come from him. So if you're looking, I know a lot of times uh, the good shepherd's always talking about, you know, people calling back home, you know, looking for, you know, back home, the prayers from back home, from Shagad, from me God, and he God, and whatever God, you know, you know, they're praying on to. But it, it's only the one and true God, King Jehovah that can give you and I spiritual increase. And he would do it for you and I in the name of Jesus. So when we pray, we should pray for increase, you know, to do more in the kingdom of God, you know? Like, we need to take this lesson from Jabez. He wanted to do more in the kingdom of God, you know? He wanted to be an impact on the kingdom of God, his work, you know. I mean, the man of God is always telling us, you know, we walk, we have this uh, uh, Christian walk, but what if we're not impacting on this world? 
What if we're not in making an impact on this world? He, he's always challenges in us. How many souls have we won this year? How can, are we making an impact on the kingdom of God if we're not winning souls for Christ? How many people have we even spoken to about Christ this year? How many people? So there's only one way that we can, you know, have an impact on our kingdom of God it is if uh, we cry on to our God in Israel and for, he, for him to do it. And I pray for each and one of us this morning that the almighty father would do it for you and he would do it for me in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. And the number four thing that he asked for was that thy hand might be with me. Amen? Amen. He asked for the living God for his hand to always be with him at all times. At all times. Hallelujah. Because like sometimes, even before we left the house this morning, you know, we don't want to leave God at our homes when we're going out. You know, we're supposed to take him everywhere that we go. Hallelujah. Everywhere that we go, we are supposed to take the living God with us. Amen? Amen. You know, when we get on the plane, you know, we take God with us. Don't leave him home. When we get on the train, take God with you. Amen? When you go to work, because we know that the devil is like a roaring lion. We even at work, we know that he's busy. So you need the hand of God with you at all times. Hallelujah. See, he understood the power of God's hand to protect and lead him. It only could be God's hand that's going to give you protection and that's going to give you direction. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, because we, we have no power of our own, you know. We have a plan, but sometimes that plan that we have gets interrupted by wickedness, by evilness, you know. So that's why we constantly need God with us wherever we go. Brothers and sisters, never leave God behind. Amen? Amen. So, like I said, we have no power to, to protect ourselves. We have none. We have no power. And we have no power even to protect our children. We have no power to even protect our children. We think we have the power to protect our children, but we have no power to protect our children. Amen? Praise the Lord. You know, because when our children leave from up under us, you know, they go here, they go to school, they go here and there. You know, it's only God that can protect our children. It's only God that can protect our children as they go to and fro. You know, we have no protection of our own. We have plenty of testimony, you know, in the church of God where if God's hands were with them, plenty of people have been in car accidents, you know, and to the glory of God, their life was saved. Their life was saved. And that's only God. Only God can do that, you know. Only God can protect you to that point. Amen? I mean, I gave the testimony before about my oldest son, you know. He, he, he traveled up to uh, Connecticut with one of his friends. He was, you know, out all day. And he decided, you know, late that night to come back home. So as him and his friend was traveling, tragedy struck. He was involved in a horrible car accident. And the car was in an accident, and the car went off the road, flipped over two or three times, and came to a rest. That night, I remember, it was pouring rain. So, to the glory of God, my son was able to get out the car. He was able to get his friend out the car. And he was telling me, Dad, you know, nobody was stopping me. But so happened, a state trooper came by. He stopped called the ambulance. They got to the hospital. So my son thought everything was going to be okay. But they came back to him a few hours later. 
and told him the very friend that was sitting right next to him perished. And to the glory of God, not only did my son survive, about eight hours later, he walked up out of the hospital. And that's only the hand of God being with my son. See, I couldn't protect my son that night. I could not help my son that night. But I'm going to tell you this, brothers and sisters. That night, before I got my rest, before God gave me rest, I prayed. I prayed for the protection of all my kids. And, and to God's pleasure, he heard my prayers. He heard my prayers that night. Before I closed my eyes and went to sleep, I prayed that God, wherever my children might be, please, Lord, protect them. Protect them, O oh Lord. And God was ever so faithful. And he protected my son. Not that I'm, you know, uh, saying anything about the young man whose life had perished, but I just give God all the glory and all the honor for protecting my son that night. You know? And we see that that we cannot protect ourselves. You look in the news all the time. Uh, there was a young lady uh, getting on the train, I believe, in a city somewhere. And she fell down the steps. And she lost her life. See? Nobody can protect her. But she lost her life. But to God's glory, her child that fell down with her, God saved her life. You know? The hand of God was over that baby. You know? So, like I said, brothers and sisters, you know, we cannot protect ourselves. We need God to go everywhere with us. Everywhere that we go, we need our Lord Jesus Christ to go before us and for his hand to be over us. And if you look at uh, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, it said, Be strong and of courage. Fear not nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that thus go with thee. He will not forsake thee or forsake thee. Hallelujah. So it's telling you in that verse that he will not fear you and he will not forsake you in your time of need. Hallelujah. He will not ever, ever fear you. See, man can fear you. Man can fear you. But the living God that we a servant here today, he will never ever fail you and I. He will never ever forsake us. Hallelujah. So we must know at all times, brothers and sisters, that God's hand will lead us through any circumstances, any trials that may come in our lives. We must have the belief, no matter what's going on in our lives, we must have the belief in the assurance that the living God that we serve will never, ever fail us and that he would always lead us in the direction that we need to be led in. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, even this morning, we, we, we have a reason to be thankful, you know? We have a reason to be thankful this morning as we come to the sanctuary. Why do I say this? Like Pastor said, why? Why? You know, Pastor's always saying that. I love it when he says that. The reason is because even last night, as we slept, he protected us. He protected us even while we are sleeping. You know? And that's the miracle of sleeping and waking up, you know? That's a blessing right there in itself, you know? As we slept, King Jehovah protected us. He didn't allow the enemy to take us away, amen? So we must always believe, brothers and sisters, that it's only our God, it's only the living God that can protect you, that can protect our loved ones, Amen? And the number five thing that Jabaz asked for was that, that thou would keep me from evil. Amen? Because we know the job of the devil. 
His job is to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen? And like I said before, he's like a roaring lion looking to see who he's going to devour next. And I pray it will be none of us and our loved ones in the name of Jesus. You know? Because we must have the confidence. And like I said, you know, the title of, you know, the word I'm, I'm preaching this morning is trusting in the Lord our God. You know, we must have trust in him because there's times in our lives when we think things are not going well, you know. And you're, you're asking, where is this God that I'm serving, you know. But you must have faith, you know, like Jabaz, you know, that the living God that he was serving, that he would, what he was asking for, that God delivered to him. Amen? So if you look at uh, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 3, it says, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Amen? Amen? It tells you there, he will establish you and he will keep you from evil if you believe. And this is what Jabez was asking for. Lord, keep me from any evil. And I pray that evilness will never come near any of our camps in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want uh, my, my sister, you know, Deaconess Afalabi to read uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 18. And I'm, I'm encouraging everybody, if you have a Bible or your phone or whatever you may have, take it out, take it out, and look at this verse and follow it. And you see what it's saying. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 through 18. I'm reading from the new KJV. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the all armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked one, and take the element of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The last verse. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my sister. See? They alone tells you that you need to put on the whole armor of our God. I mean, if you was here, if, we, if you was uh, here for us for um, the prayer summit, my sister spoke about that, you know, putting on the whole armor of God because evil is all around us. Wickedness is all around us. And how do we put on the whole armor of God? We need to, you know, read our Bibles more. We need to pray to the living God more. You know, we need to saturate ourselves with the word of God day and night. We need to meditate on the word of God day and night. You know, this is how we put on the whole armor of God. Because sometimes the devil can come into somebody who don't have the whole armor of God in. You know, you know, he can use, you know, our, our children. You know, he can use anything, you know, to come in. You know, do evil to you, you know? And, you know, man of God always said, you know, after war, prepare for victory. After, uh, excuse me, after victory, prepare for war, you know? 
After victory, be prepared for war. So you need to put on the whole armor of God to fight against all the evil and wickedness of this world. Amen? So if you, you know, if you look at uh, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24, Isaiah chapter, chapter 65, verse 24, it said, before they call, I will answer. Before they call, I would answer. While they are yet speaking, I would hear. See, God already knows in advance. He's just waiting. He's just waiting for you to call upon him, you know? He's just waiting for you to put on your whole armor of God, you know? Praise the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, you know, we have habits in our lives, each and every one of us. We, have, we all have habits, you know? And one of our habits we should have is prayer each and every day. Amen? We must make prayer part of our everyday life. We must be have, make uh, prayer being a habit in our life, you know? Because that's why the Bible states, you know, that give us your daily bread, not your weekly bread, not your monthly bread, but your daily bread, you know? So we must make prayer part of our habit each and every day. You know, we must try to make reading the Bible part of our everyday life because we have many habits that don't glorify God. We have many habits, but that one of the habits that we should have is praying to our God, reading our Bible, fellowshipping with one another. Amen? And this is why, like I said, he said, this is our daily bread. This is not our weekly bread. This is not our monthly bread. It's our daily bread. Hallelujah. So uh, as we go through our Christian life, brothers and sisters, we must strive to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. We must try, strive to be a blessing to others in our lives, you know? How do we do that, you know? How do we do that? You know, the Bible tells us that uh, God's to be water of those who diligently seek him. Are we seeking the face of God each and every day we, when we wake up? One of the things I try to do each and every day, brothers and sisters, is when I open my eyes, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for allowing me to be in the land of the living. Hallelujah. So he's a rewarder of those who seek him dil diligently every day. You know? And that's why, you know, before we even leave our home, you know, we look in the mirror. We, we want to make sure everything is right before we, we, we go out that door. But I'm challenging you, brothers and sisters, to look in the spiritual mirror. Amen? To look in the spiritual mirror. So, whatever needs to be changed in your spiritual life, you know, God will give you change. You know, because yesterday, uh, Deacon Afalabi, he, he left the uh, open uh, heavens yesterday. And the word that came forth was change. Change. You know, God will change whatever needs to be changed in your life. But you want and I need to look in our spiritual mirror each and every day to see what that is that needs to be changed. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, I just got one prayer point for us this morning. I told you that I would not be up here very long. So, let us rise. Let us rise. And let our Father who is in heaven hear our voices this morning. Not, don't let us keep our voices to ourselves. So the prayer point that I have for this morning is, Father, Father I put my trust in you. Don't ever let me be put to shame. 
Turn that into prayer, brothers and sisters. Call on Paul, the God in heaven, the God of Israel, O Lord. Father, we put our trust in you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus, O Lord. Don't ever let us be put to shame, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. Don't ever let our children be put to shame, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord. We put all our trust in you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus, O Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, King of glory. In Jesus' most glorious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus.